to accept and to follow and to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to spend their lives trying to figure out how to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you have these two kinds of people roaming the earth. And on a superficial level, you may notice something strange, and that is those people who believe in Allah and those people who disbelieve in Allah, they seem to encounter and have the same kinds of issues and problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings hurricanes and it, it affects both people who believe in it and people who disbelieve in it. Allah brings hardships and difficulties to people and it comes to those who believe and those who don't believe. Many of us, we are encountered sometimes with sicknesses, or we have marital problems, or we have a calamity, we get in a car accident, or we have problems with our children, or we lost our job, or our income. And it seems as if Allah gives it both to the believers and the disbelievers. Without discrimination. And each of us sitting here today, we should do a poll, all of us, have some kind of difficulty or the other that we are battling with. Some kinds of problems. And we seem to live life just moving from one problem to the next. Being busy using our time trying to solve all the challenges that keep coming at us. And so we ask ourselves, if that is the case, what is it so special for people to believe in Allah? In fact, some people who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blames Allah for what happens in the world. This is how can God sit by idly and allow all of this murder and mayhem and seeming oppression on people? Why is Allah sitting by and allowing it to happen and doesn't seem to be doing anything? Muslims are making dua day and night. And still we see things happen of the most immense level of, of atrocity that humanity has done to each other. And there are some people who decide that they can't be God. Because if there was God, he cannot allow such. But the reality is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do exist and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does watch everything that happens in the world. In fact, nothing happens without the permission of Allah. <coughs> and you can have it one way or the other. You can say to Allah, you should have made us creatures who don't have any free will. Tell us exactly what to do and force us to do it so we will do everything right. They are creatures like that, they are called angels. But if you want free will, Allah has to give you the opportunity to be able to bring whatever you have to the table. And to know that وَمَنْ وَجِدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَبُمَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ and the Prophet ﷺ said, and whenever you see goodness coming to you, it is from Allah. And whenever you see all of this stuff, blame yourself. Because these things are part of the free will which we ask for. And a lot of the things we see is done by us. About ourselves. And so, the difference between the believer and the disbeliever is not what comes at you but how you behave towards it. How we react towards it. And there you find two different universes in the way we deal with this. For a disbeliever or someone who doesn't believe in God, they have nowhere to go. And so when difficulties and hardship come to them, they don't have any God that they believe in or they can call on. They are left alone and they become frustrated. They become anxious. They become depressed. They don't see a way out of all of their difficulties. And that is why they have to go sometimes and get professional help 
and all kinds of stuff. People commit suicide. They don't know how to solve their problems. But Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the believers, have placed for us an amazing thing that is in our deen. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Quran. And the Quran touts itself, heralds itself as a book of guidance. In fact, after the first surah, very immediately after, Allah said, Alif Lami, Dhalika al-Kitab al-Aibafi, Udallim al-Taqi. That verily this book is a book without doubt, and it guides the people who have taqwa, who believe. In other places, Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi, Unzila fi al-Quran, Udallim al-Nas, Ubayyadati min al-Buda wa al-Furqan. Allah says, from Ramadan, is coming is the month in which the Quran was sent down with the guidance, with the explanation, the clarification of its own guidance, and as a Quran, as a criteria to let us know what the standards. In other places, Allah talks about the Quran. That we have sent down this Quran as a healing and as a mercy to those who believe. So the Quran is here as a guidance for not only those who believe who dealt in that, but for humanity as a whole. In the hand of Quran, the very this Quran guides to that which is upright. And so here we have the Quran as our source of guidance. So no matter what comes at us from life, whether it's financial problem, whether it's a job, whether it's just your, your siblings, whether it's a health problem, whether, whatever it is, the Quran stands here and says, I have solutions for you to deal with it. That's what I came to do. And so the believer behaves very different from the disbeliever. Here's how the believer behaves. There are three dimensions to the believer's way of responding to difficulties. The first is in the area of the Iman or the belief of the believer. A believer understands and accepts in their heart that Allah sees everything. That Allah hears everything. That Allah is al hakim the wise. And that Allah has a wisdom behind everything that happens in the world. It's from Allah's wisdom. And that Allah permits whatever you see happening, it is with the permission of Allah. And so a believer going in already has this understanding and this belief in their hearts. Now no matter what is happening to me, it is from the wisdom of Allah. I may not understand why <coughs> this is being thrown at me. I'm such an innocent person. Why? I grew up so well, I worship Allah all my life. Why am I getting this difficulty? Believer never does that. They understand these are from the wisdom of Allah. And Allah has designed the path of every one of us to travel in a very specific way. Some of us He makes rich, some of us He makes poor. Some of us He makes intelligent, some of us He makes not so intelligent. Some of us He makes strong believers. Some Allah designs our path facilitate that happens. And so we go in with that active. Secondly, is from the knowledge of the believer, who after studying the Quran and the Sirah, understands certain principles that are so important in terms of how we deal with our challenges in life. And one of the first is that the recognition that Allah will test do you believe, do you think you will just say, I believe, and Allah will not test you? That He did it to us before, in order to distinguish those who are true and those who are false. For a lot of us, we think tests are bad things, but actually, tests are invaluable to our progress. When you get tested, that's how 
how you grow. That's how you begin to evolve and get strong when you come out of those tests. Tests serve the purpose to distinguish those who are qualified and those who are not. You want to go to a doctor who didn't study, didn't graduate, wasn't tested severely to make sure that he is qualified. So when you will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is trying to make sure that the people who are true emerge. When you get a test from Allah, He's helping you to become bigger and better. And helps us to be. That's why we still do tests in college. Every day we do tests. To get to drive a car, you have to take a test. Why? Because we want to make sure what that test does. It tells us who should be on the road and who should not be. You spoke to And there's a whole bunch of benefits of why we get tested. I just want to mention one more. When the believer gets tested, they become more closer to Allah. When everything is going right with you, sometimes we don't remember Allah. We don't need Him. We don't have anything to ask Him for. I have everything going well. And the Prophet said, Remember Allah when things are going well. Because then when it's not going so well, Allah will remember you. And so when we get tested, what are the things we do? We immediately want to find Allah at the bed and to ask for help. And so that test makes us closer, connects us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah tests the believers. And He tests most the ones whom he loves best. That's why the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were tested so much more than other people. Because when you emerge from those, you become an amazing believer. So we learned that as a paradigm going into the era of God. The second thing we learned, the second thing we learned is that our blessings are always more than our problems. Allah's mercy always exceeds his promise. And so even though a lot of things may be happening to me, I'm always conscious of the fact that the blessings that Allah has given me is so much more. We get caught up in focusing on the things which we don't have and get frustrated instead of taking a day or two and saying, what is it I do have? And look at what we have. There are people in the world who would love to exchange places with you. There are people literally who give an arm, I'm talking about a live arm, just to be in America. They're willing to cut off one of their arm if it will allow them the privilege to sit where you sit. And we sit sometimes on a complaint. So we know going in as a believer, and blessings are all more, always more. And then we learn, that Allah says, I will never give you a problem or a challenge unless I first bless you with the ability to solve it. I cannot give you a challenge greater than your capacity to handle it. And so for the believer, no matter what they see before them, just lost my job, my wife died, my father has cancer, no matter what appears before them, the believer says to themselves, I have already been blessed with everything I need to deal with all of this. For Allah cannot give me something beyond my capacity to handle. And so a believer doesn't go into his problem asking, I don't know if I can deal with it. He doesn't do that. He just says, I've been blessed with the ability, let me figure out how to deal with it. Let me pull from whatever it is I've been given. I know I can handle all of it. And then we are taught. That from our knowledge of the paradigm of Allah is that He allows hardship and ease to come together. They're not going to be permanent. That they will they'll mix sometimes. Ah, hardship and then ease, and ease and hardship. So the believer always understands this. And from the knowledge of Allah's paradigm that we know is that every problem has a solution. And so for a believer, it's never, this is an impossible scenario for me. He always has in the back of his mind 
Allah has a solution for every problem that is presented. And so the believer has a very different mindset when they approach their problems. From their belief and their knowledge of that is contained in the paradigm presented by the Quran and the Sultan. And then lastly, the believer's actions are very special. The believer knows that whenever I'm given difficult challenges and problems coming at me, I am supposed to do certain actions that will help in dealing with all of this. And the first is to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dua, mukul ibadah, is one of the highest levels of worship. To turn to Allah and ask, that Allah is willing, ready, and will answer you. So the believer immediately from getting problems doesn't spend a lot of time complaining to other people, looking for some human out there to deal with their problems. They immediately turn to Allah and ask from Him. Nobody likes people who complain and always <coughs> feel unpleasant about their situation. We are not required to do that. We begin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing is that the believer understands that what will facilitate Allah to look kindly on me or even more kindly on me is if I try to ask him to forgive some of my sins. So they make a stick found. Oh Allah, forgive some of the sins so that I will be purer, that it will be more <coughs> easier for you to deal and help with me. So the believer asks for forgiveness. The third thing is the believer trust in Allah, the tawakkul that comes from believer that says, I don't see a solution to my problem, but I am trusting that Allah who has said, Allah who has said, who Allah said that he will keep my back, he will have my back. In every circumstance, if I cling to him, that I will hold fast to Allah. Believer has this confidence, this absolute trust, that even though I don't see a solution right now, I am confident that Allah will open a makhraj, he will open a way for me to go past. And then the believer understand the power of sabr. The sabr, sabr, yeah, sabr is illumination. In the Allah ma'as sabirin, that Allah is with those who have sabr. Wa'ala nas ma'as sabr. That help comes when you have sabr. When you have patience. When you don't get too excited and, and dramatic. And you calmly deal with the issues and, and waiting and exploring possibilities of solution. You have sabr. The believer knows that part of what they will have to do is also to increase their worship of Allah. Whenever you have a lot of issues facing you, that is the time to increase your worship of Allah and decrease your sins that you may be doing. To make yourself more qualified to accept from Allah the goodness that He brings. And lastly, the believer learns from his deen that when you have a problem, sitting and just making dua and hoping for something to fall from the sky is not how Allah has asked us to deal with our problems. When a believer gets a problem, he immediately turns on his thinking caps. The believer immediately examines this problem professionally and begins to analyze this problem, begin to delve into it, begin to proactively Look for solutions. Make sure a consultation with people, network, whatever is necessary to get that challenge overcome. The believer proactively, while he's doing all of this other thing to solicit from Allah's help, proactively begins to move and work because the believer understands. That when you make the effort to strive in the paths of Allah, Allah will make sure that He is there to give you the solutions and the guidance that you need to overcome them. 
So it's a very different perspective that believers have. And through all of this, the believer remains content because they understand all of what I said. And they never get agitated, frustrated. They, they don't become phased by the things which comes of them. They remain contented in the secure knowledge that Allah will make it right if I proceed there. An example of a believer who went through similar things is Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for almost 80 years of his life. Give him everything that you want. So you know, in that group of Shahwat bin al Nisa, women and gold and silver and land and cattle. Rich man, beautiful large family, large house. Prophet Ayyub had it all. Everything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it away for about seven years. And what happened to him? Thieves came, they stole all his cattle, destroyed his farm. The foundation of his house collapsed, killed all his family members. His wife, tried to stay with him and to be a loyal spouse. Please come, come move his move as close as possible. Just fill out the gap. Okay. Yeah, more people come here. He lost everything. And when he thought he, there was nothing else to lose, he got sick. Not any kind of sickness. You see, there are sicknesses and there are sicknesses. There's some kind of sickness where you might have an internal cancer. Nobody can notice the sickness. He had worms all over his skin coming out. Visible, difficult to go out in society, people looking at him. This was a man who was a rich man. And everything, including all of this, happening to him. But Prophet Ayyub understood all that I said to you. And remained calm, contented, patient. Trusting in Allah's wisdom. His wife used to get frustrated at how calm he was. She was upset that he would not get angry with Allah. Allah said, I want to miss you, you don't get angry. He used to look at the worms and smile. I said, but there's no worms, mate. And she was like, she couldn't take it no more. She said, I'm done with you. I can't. So then he went off the wife. She left the home. She couldn't deal with this level of faith, of calmness, of contentment in the face of all that has happened. But he remained strong, he never fostered. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him back everything that he had lost. Everything. Even his wife came back and tried to reconcile him. And you go throughout the Quran and you will see examples from the use of our so Time does not permit us. And there are heroes among us. Some of you may know them and some of you may not. So I want to talk about one I hope they are not embarrassed. Some of you may not know something like that. We have a run among us who always admire him. And at a young age, fairly young for a young man, you know, ended up with bad kidneys, had to do dialysis. Never saw him frustrated, complaining, frustrated. Came to the masjid, prayed all his salam. Would sit there in Ramadan five, four, five hours memorizing the Quran. Would do etikaf by bringing a portable dialysis machine in the masjid. Didn't it occur to him, you know what? I'm obliged to maybe skip this. Could have chosen the option to stay at home instead of coming to the masjid. Had excuses, but found a way to come every single day, every salah, Ramadan. Praying and being content and hoping in the wisdom and mercy of Allah. And Allah found him kidney that he was able to recover from. When you are prepared to understand and don't allow your issues and your difficulties to overwhelm you, then you understand how you need to behave. And that is the difference between the believer and the disbeliever. The believer will crazy with their problems. Muslims are unfaithful, unmoved, confident that all this is part of Allah's plan and that all will be resolved. And so this Ramadan, 
and you have that for and sitting there. Anytime you have a problem, it's sitting there and said, solutions here. Come and get it. We don't even want to read it. Ramadan is the time when all of us will pick up our Quran. I want to ask you, just don't pick it up and recite it for the recitation benefit alone. But really try to delve in it and understand some of the guidance and the beautiful solutions and the beautiful lifestyle that it has asked us to do. So do not laugh. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah's mercy is incredible. And so as all of us sit here today, preparing for Ramadan and the challenges we're going to have with it, I ask you to begin to embrace and understand how we need to behave and deal with the issues that are coming before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us and forgive us and allow us to be champions of people who will solve problems everywhere, not only for ourselves, but for the world and the community at large. We are the problem solvers that Allah sent to the planet to help the rest of the world find solutions. Do not sit and do nothing. May Allah help us to change the world for the better. Alhamdulillah, we are the people of the world. 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 We are the people of the world.